Greater Cincinnati is full of young kids doing extraordinary things. It's called Reese's Heart because we have a heart for the homeless. Their drive to help others. Every kid should feel that same self-worth and self-pride that we feel whenever we put on a new pair of shoes. And passion for their craft have earned them national recognition. I never thought that it would be this big. On this episode of Let's Talk Sensi, we talk to the young people sharing their talent. To find out what it takes to get to their level of achievement and what's pushing them to do things far beyond their age. From WLWT, this is Let's Talk Cincy. Choosing to be an inspiration and sharing remarkable talent, today we are bringing together an amazing group of young folks Welcome to Let's Talk Sensi. I'm Curtis Fuller. And I'm Alexis Rogers. The first group we're going to talk about is known for collecting shoes and giving them to underprivileged children across the world. We've been following the Soul Bros for many years now and found their giving spirit goes far beyond shoes. The Soul Bros Foundation is a nonprofit started in 2015. We first introduced you to Curtis Harrison, Spencer Boyd, and Kellen Newman when they were eighth graders at Seven Hills Middle School. I'm a really big sneakerhead. The self-proclaimed sneakerheads were inspired by Spencer's mom, who told them about children in Jamaica having no shoes at all. So they decided to do something. You know how it feels when you get a new pair of shoes. So we said that we wanted other kids to feel the same self-pride that we do when we put on a new pair of shoes. They started collecting shoes to send to Jamaica. A couple years later, Breland Anderson joined the trio with their mission. Now, in their senior year, they've collected and distributed over 6,000 pairs of sneakers to children in Jamaica, Ghana, Texas, and right here in Greater Cincinnati. They've opened a sneaker closet at Revelation Baptist Church in the West End that serves as a holding and distribution location. So that kids can come in there and see what shoes they want. Especially we did it now, because it's like people are going back to school so they can get back to school shoes. The Soul Bros have also written and published a children's book called Soul Bros Change the World. Our generation's not lost, we just seek to be inspired and um, we just want to inspire the next generation to be something big. They've also hosted a warm for the winter drive, giving people coats and boots. While doing all of this, they've become elite athletes in football, baseball, basketball, swimming and lacrosse. They are also members of the National Honor Society and have been given a number of awards for their work. How about that, huh? So amazing. Well, it, it is pretty amazing to see how they've grown, first of all. Oh, Today, yeah. <laughs> the Soul Bros are in our studio. Curtis, Spencer, Breland, and of course, Kellen couldn't make it, but we'll still have a lot of fun today. Guys, sure. how's it going? I mean, you all have done so much. How's the journey been over these last couple years as we've seen you grow yeah, up? It's been crazy. I mean, you know, we're all seniors this year. We're all in the college process, figuring all that out right now. So it's been a lot, and it's kind of, it's just kind of nostalgic to be able to look back at those clips and all that. It's, it's been great for me. I, I would imagine the response, talk about the response over the over the past few years yeah for sure so like it's as it started you know when we were eighth graders a lot of our friends were like oh yeah they're just trying to have a big party they're just asking for our shoes to probably do it for themselves <laughs> but you know as we've grown i feel like a lot of people have saw that we really are just out there trying to inspire other people so we can really change the world you know you agree yeah for the yeah, most yeah, part yeah, yeah. For the most part, yeah let's talk about jamaica you guys got a chance to physically go tell us about that experience yeah. Um, going to Jamaica, that was just so crazy. Just seeing the kids um, with big smiles on their faces and we're giving them shoes, you know, it's just a really great experience just to make them happy, just to make anybody happy, really. So. And, and what about this children's book? I mean, whose idea was that? Yeah, so we, <laughs> so we were actually, kind of yeah, idea. it was okay. kind of, we were, we were setting up this project to think about like reading our own like favorite ch children's stories to like our little lower school at my school. Mm -hmm. So some of the kindergartners and stuff. And then we decided like, you know, why don't we just inspire these kids with our story as well? So we kind of, Breland likes to say, we took our time to make it rhyme. Yeah. So oh, okay. we wrote the little children's <laughs> book one day. We sat in a room. We kind of just started spitting out some rhymes that kind of would reflect our story in a way that kids wouldn't be engaged in. Breland, I can see yeah. you, like, I can imagine you in the mirror trying to, like, rhyme it all out. The entire <laughs> children's <laughs> book. Like, you just read the whole book, and it's kind of like a rap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, so if, if you could, how has this, we'll go straight down the line, how has this changed you individually? I guess it just makes me think, like, you can see somebody who's, like, not doing well, and you can just go help them, like, 
get out and help them. So yeah. like, it makes me be a better person in my daily life. Yeah. For me, it's just, it gives me a better appreciation for what I have, you know, and I feel like in a lot of, you know, the kids in my area that we take advantage of what we have. So I feel like this has really humbled a lot of it. So like when we go to Jamaica, we see these kids running around with no shoes on, having so much fun, having so much joy. And I come home, I've seen my friends that they have these nice cars, these nice houses, all their PlayStations, Xboxes, and they're complaining like, my mom didn't get me this. And it's kind of like, it's just really, it's really humbling experience for me. Yeah, it's, also my, may, it's also made me appreciate my shoes like yeah. that much more. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like, for sure. For, sure. Um, for me, I'm just really grateful because, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me how I can have like 50 pairs of shoes and there's people out here who don't have anything walking around with cardboard. That just doesn't yeah. logically make sense to me. So I'm just very grateful for everything I have. 50 pairs of shoes. I have one pair of shoes. Hello. Well, I have a little bit more than that, but I'm so proud of you all. It's so awesome to see you all grow. Yeah, thank you. I have one thank pair you. of tennis shoes. Okay, all right, we're going to need to get him some new shoes. Yeah, for you. sure. Oh, we got you. <laughs> Hit the got sneaker closet. We'll get you Coming up, a local teen putting Cincinnati on the map for violin. He started playing at just four years old. How Maxwell Fairman's talent took him all the way to the White House and what he plans to do next. But first, we want to introduce you to another talented young person. Meet 16-year-old Jaira Burton. He is a student at Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. His parents say he's been dancing since the age of six. You know, he caught the eye of America's Got Talent and many across the city with his iconic mime dancing. He perfected this unique style of dance in spite of being diagnosed with epilepsy. He continues to inspire many. Wow, that was singer Anthony Fredrickson from Mason. You know, he auditioned for The Voice through Snapchat, and he got the attention of all the judges, especially Alicia Keys, and made it through multiple rounds of competition. Jan? That's fantastic. Oh, my goodness, so much talent. Well, I'm really excited to be here with superstar violinist Maxwell Fairman. As Curtis said, Maxwell played at the White House. He was invited by former President Barack Obama. He just won this past summer the National NAACP AXO Gold Award, and he is only a 10th grader at Walnut Hills High School. Maxwell, welcome. Thank you. So, you know, so Curtis said you've been playing violin since you were four years old. Uh, Whose idea was it for you to start? Uh, it was my idea, actually. I was inspired by my great uncle, because uh, I had went to his house um, earlier. And he showed me all sorts of instruments, and then I ended up wanting to play the violin. So at age four, you to told your parents want to play violin. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And so you've been playing since. And how much do you practice? Uh, I practice about three to four hours a day. Wow! So how does that how does that work with school and other activities? Uh, I just try to do my homework as quickly as possible, and then um, if I have other activities, they're going to be violin related anyway. So uh, I. I guess I get more practice through those two. And it, was there ever a time when your parents had to say, Maxwell, practice? Um, no, not really. So you just, you, you started playing violin, you loved it from the start? Uh, yeah, I believe that the drive has to come from within to pursue this kind of career. Wow, you've, you definitely had that drive. So what's the, what's the, the best experience you've had playing violin? Um, probably um, going to the White House in 2016. Yeah, tell us about that. Um, so we, I g we got to play for uh, Michelle Obama uh, because Barack Obama was overseas at the time. And um, so it was with a quartet of, we called it the Perfect Fourth, and we had played at the Sphinx Performance Academy uh, okay. that summer. Yeah. And uh, Sphinx was receiving an award, so we got to play at the award ceremony. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we would like to hear you play. So you, we're going to let you play something, and we'll just go out as you're playing something for us.
started making breakfast sandwiches and brewing coffee. From preparing family meals to winning a nationally televised food competition, the local teenager who became champion of Chopped Junior and how she's now making a difference when Let's Talk Sensi returns. And we're all going to get some. <laughs> a young chemical engineer in the making, that was nine-year-old Maddie. She is the owner of Maddie's Makeup. You see, Maddie and her mom have created their own makeup line using natural ingredients. How about that, huh? Wow. I love that. I so love smart. that, too. Oh, and I've been telling you, lip gloss will do you good. I'm going to get some of Maddie's okay. I'm lip just gloss. Saying. There we go. <laughs> hey, we have another impressive young lady. Naja Bray has made a name for herself as a Chopped Junior Champion after appearing on the Food Network series and winning $10,000. And that all was when she was just 12 years old in 2016. Naja is now joining us doing big things at age 16. Nadja, how's it going? And I think you even brought us some goodies, I yes, see. Yes, I brought macarons for you guys to try. It's been going very, mm. very well. I have been, um, I have been doing so many different things in the community. Yeah. Now, now she seems serious. I mean, so <laughs> she, she, she is. There we go. All right. So, so your, your love of uh, cooking and baking things, tell us about how that all started. So it started when my baby sister um, was born. She was in NICU. And I have three other siblings that I was taking care of and making things that they were going to eat. And one of my missions was to get my um, six-year-old, well, they weren't six then, but to get them to eat vegetables, just to get them to branch out and try different things other than chicken nuggets. And I was <laughs> successful with that. Um, but That's after that, <laughs> right, um, I've always loved the show Chopped, but when they came out with the Chopped Junior, I just signed up one day just like without thought and I told my mom I was like if you get a call from New York City it's chopped you know answer it oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she actually did and I remember because she was screaming around the house and just so excited for me and from there it was so many different interviews and mm. things in preparation to actually go to New York City and film it's so amazing seeing you now because I remember when you won and I remember meeting you for the first time then. What's going on now? What's your plans for the future? You're such a driven young lady. I love to see it. Thank you. I have um, just started my business selling macarons and cupcakes. Um, and so I have been trying to do vendor events. I just did my first vendor event and it was very, very successful. I sold out of everything that I made. Um, it's just been so exciting taking things um, from Chop Junior to now me having my own business. All right, so do I get a chance to eat these or yes, this is just do. for decoration? No, here? You they can try look one. Good. They do these look are good. cinnamon roll tell, tell macarons. Me. Okay. Um, macarons are a French pastry. I like to describe them as like oh, a French. Hello. <laughs> I like to describe <laughs> them as like a French sandwich <laughs> cookie. <laughs> So right. there is cream cheese, buttercream in the inside. Okay. All right. And um, those all right. are cinnamon roll. Mm. He's having a lot of fun mm. with this macaron. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we miss you. It's just uh, très bien. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm having way too much fun. A lot this. of fun. A lot of <laughs> fun. This normal. is amazing. This so, is good. In 10 years, we will see you doing big things. I know it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I definitely. I can't talk anymore because I'm... <laughs> Well, while you're jamming on that, Naja, thank you mm. so much. We are so proud of you. Keep it up, and I know we will see your name and lights thank you. very, 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 very soon. Thank you. You know, Naja's not our only talented kid that we have here today. No. We have so many more, and we couldn't help but feature a young girl from Finneytown whose heart overflows with compassion. Reese Smedley is giving spirit and love for others, pushed her to do more for people in need. During the day, Reese Medley loves being a wildcat at Whitaker Elementary School. I am eight years old. She takes pride in her work. Yes, she is a worker bee. <laughs> it's what she does after school that makes a big difference. She calls it Reese's heart. It's called Reese's heart because we have a heart for the homeless. Start with the water. 
Reese creates what she calls blessing bags to hand out to those who are experiencing homelessness in Cincinnati. One day I was downtown and my mom was driving and then I saw a homeless man and we didn't have anything to um, get so and I started um, crying because I really wanted to give him something. Within just a couple of months, Reese gathered hundreds of donations and with the help of her family and friends, she's handed out around 200 bags. It was very fun to make bags. We put food like granola bars, water, um, and mouthwash, toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant. And I heard you put in a note. What does the note say? God loves you, be blessed. She saw this need, she felt this compassion for the homeless people, and she, she saw that she could do something in a very simple way. They know her by name. Um, we, we go usually on the weekends to just sit and talk with the homeless, and it's really important for Reese to, un to learn their names and have a conversation, understand how they're doing. And they always fist bump her, and they're super excited to see her coming. Does your classmates know about what you do with Reese's heart? I told them a few stories. Yes, what do they think about it? They think that was a good thing to do. Did they ever ask to be involved? Not yet. I think they're a little shy to ask. Reese truly has a heart for all. She's excited to see others around her get involved. I had no idea um, what an impact she would have um, to our local community at such a young age. Um, and again, I just see it going further and further um, for her. Reese might be tiny, but her purpose is enormous. Where do you see Reese's heart being in 10 years? All over the place, all over the world, spreading everywhere. When you see homeless people, give bags to them and ask them what their name is and pray for them. Man, isn't she so cute? She is. Isn't I, that I love what she's doing and Reese is scheduled to teach an adult women's group how to give back through her organization and she's going to start having these community parties where people can host them at their houses to raise funds so that way they can have things to give in the bags. Good. Not just for kids, just uh, adults. Yeah, for us too. Oh, Big wow. kids like us oh, can good. go and be cool yeah. with Reese. I will be there. <laughs> with the macarons. Yeah, of course. <laughs> when we come back on Let's Talk Sensei, she's already dance with Radio City Rockettes, and she has not even graduated from high school. We're going to introduce you to Ava Sign and the next amazing role she's preparing for this holiday season. Hi everyone, welcome to Amazing Amy Cooking. Yeah, we introduced you to Liana Jones, uh, better known online as Amazing Amy. That was back in 2018. Her mother decided to use cooking as a way for Liana to practice her speech. It turned out to be a great ingredient for learning that's still going strong. Right, Josiah, we got your message. We're highlighting talented kids in the Cincinnati area, and that was Josiah from Zion Temple Christian Academy in Avondale. He started Kingdom Kid Apparel, and they provide clothing to not only inspire and motivate children, but their parents as well. And of course, we have another really cool and talented kid, and actually, really young woman. I'll call you a young woman. We have Ava Sign here with us. So graceful, so elegant. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. I mean, you're a busy lady. The School of Creative and Performing yeah, Arts. Yeah. Yes. You could probably dance around circles <laughs> when it comes to us. Let's talk about when you dance with the Radio City Rockettes because that's amazing and huge. Yeah, I danced for the Radio City Rockettes for two seasons um, at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. I was 12 years old and 13 at the time, and it was an amazing experience. I got to perform for Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman, and I got so close with the Radio City Rockettes, and I still keep in contact with them. <laughs> well, that is pretty cool. I, I was asking you who 
uh, you admire as a dancer, and obviously uh, it's Copeland. You, you yes, of course, that. yeah. yeah. Uh, did, uh, how, where did this love for dancing start? Oh, I I just been I've been dancing since the age of three. I I fell in love with ballet in Point, and mm. that's when I got the job for Radio City. And I've been dancing at the School for Creative and Performing Arts since the fifth grade, and I. I dance, I train for five hours every day and 10 hours at my other studio each week and I study over the summers. I studied at the Juilliard School over the, this past summer and that was an amazing experience. So I just love dancing. <laughs> What's next for you? Oh, I'm auditioning for shows and um, ballet companies and applying to colleges at the moment. So I don't know what my plans for next year will be, but I'm excited. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, t talk about uh, what's coming up this holiday. Are you in a holiday show? Yes, or? I'm I'm at the School for Creative Performing Arts uh, performing as Sugar Plum and the Snow Queen for okay. the Nutcracker. Yeah. And I'm also going to be in the Awaited Show at the Aronoff being, performing as Mary. Wow. And yeah, so you can get your tickets at uh, awaitedshow.com and other information. <laughs> <laughs> the show is That's December 20th through 23rd. There you go. <laughs> they, will, they will appreciate that. They will appreciate that. Uh, uh, I guess we should do, should we bring in the uh, Yes, let's everybody bring else in now? all of yeah. our talented young adults and kiddos. How about we yeah. say that? You yeah. guys are all too cool for school. This is awesome. I, I, I think what's most impressive is that uh, so often we do these stories, negative stories about mm -hmm. what's, what is happening to young people, but the, I, all of you really inspire me. I mean, uh, just pr pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So we appreciate you all being here. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you. Anytime you, you know, uh, with presidents and kings and things. Just give us a call. Let, uh, let them know about Let's Talk Cincy. <laughs> How's that? I hope you have enjoyed this, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Let's Talk Cincy. Uh, we want to hear from you. So email us your ideas at ltc at wlwt.com, and you can also see full episodes on our website. Stay encouraged, and we'll see you next time.